Welcome to Trading Lounge and the US indices for Thursday, October 7. And starting with the Russell here, it looks a little bit complicated. It's on a tick chart, 100 ticks. So um, I was thinking about this in just putting a bit of work into it. Uh, wave 3 here with an ABC here for the A wave, an ABC here for the B wave. Uh, the A wave here, the B wave here, the C wave here for the C wave, and then an A and a B and a C for the D wave, and then an A wave here, and then we want to see the B wave and the C wave finish off here. We're sort of, well, it is a triangle um, as such. It's a bit of a doozy, I have to say, but um, from wave three here, an A, B, C, D, and E over here for that. So still a lot of fluffing around in here to do before we get that takeoff there. And of course, we're looking for the lows in the NASDAQ and the S&P uh, 500. So um, yeah, I mean, this this could, you know, looking at this here, could even just end up being smaller within this space here as well. So we just need to uh, keep an eye on that. Um, but obviously, I think all these markets, you know, will move off together um, as such. So that's what we're sort of looking for. Obviously, there's plenty of news out there with the world collapsing and all the rest of it, you know, in terms of um, uh, Biden's budget thing and so on and so on so there's plenty of uh <clears throat> plenty of excuses for the market to uh rock and roll in either way with the uh s p i'll start with the s p then i'll have a look at the nasdaq so with the s p on the four hour chart here we've got wave three here as you know and then going down to wave four so we've got a double zigzag so an a b c is a single zigzag and then an a and a b and a c as the double zigzag so this move in through here i'm looking at it as a uh, triangle pattern and uh yeah look it's it seems to be corrective, you know. Um, at what point would I be wrong and we need to be, you know, bullish at, 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 that, uh, at that stage? Well, I think that um, if this is the A wave down to this low here, and this is the 50-60% level here, then I would want to see support. I would want to see a classic trading levels pattern on that price point which going over to the closest largest number would be 4400 so i would want to see uh before i went long personally if that was the case i mean i can't give financial advice if i've got a license and that i don't know your own circumstances but i'd need personally i'd need to see something like that you know my story so it's all pretty simple that would be the safe trade at that point to go long and to call it in but obviously there's a lot i mean i'm not up to date with the news and i don't watch it every day but um when I do see it, I've, it's always too late for me. I certainly couldn't trade the news as such. But, um, yeah, so I don't know where we are in the news cycle of certain events. Um, but I, I, don't if, I don't know if they're resolved or not. But anyway, um, I just see this pushing up here a little tiny bit further and then giving us five waves down. Um, you know, I know that you can't buy hope in the market, but uh, hopefully if this is correct, then um, I know this has been a little bit difficult. Well, for me it has, but this move down through here being a C wave, it should be in a nice five wave structure coming down. So it should be easy to track. We should be able to get the low. We won't buy on the low. We'll need confirmation of an impulse wave to the upside. Uh, and then we can start working that wherever that may be. Um, but that's basically where we are with um, indices globally. Uh, let's just go in here and have a look at this because there is some explaining to do. So the triangle pattern would look like this. So the A wave here, an A, B, C, D and E wave here. Like I said, we can't go long unless we get a classic trading levels pattern, the arrival, the reaction, the first high above the level, an A, B, C pattern here. And then we can go long over here for that. So I'm going to draw that in just in case it happens. Okay, so you'll know what to do if it's there. Don't go chasing this first high up here because you may get away with it, but most of the time you're not going to get away with it. It's going to pull back at that point so that b wave high here as an a and a b and a c wave here and then pushing up that way it proves to you there's a there's a lot 
going on here in terms of how the volume plays out in the market depth around that number um yeah so simple as it is it's to make something you know to make something simple there's a lot of complexity behind it you know but making the complex simple is what i'm trying to do so um yeah is there another way to look at this yeah i suppose so we could look at this as an a wave here a b wave over here and a c wave up here so we can get that five waves over here and that's what we need to look um at as well so there's um i can put this so there's yeah anyway i won't go into it but that's what sort of looking at at this point it, it's just that there's a couple of things here this counts better up as a corrective wave this is corrective, obviously, a bit, but it's bullish corrective. Um, but this one here, this is the this is the one here because this is in this is in three waves. Here. You can see we've got a nice sort of third wave here. We could go one and two and three and four and five in here. So you can see that this is not five waves here. That's the point. Um, yeah. So just on the tick chart, just to get a bit more insight into this particular pattern. It's 10 enough, yeah. So this move up here is definitely not in five waves, whichever way you look at it. It doesn't matter what, it doesn't matter if you use that low or that low, it would still be three, an A and a B, it would still be three waves up at this point. And this one here, you can't you have to call that you could go one and two and three and four and five but then it's a bit dodgy in here for that so that doesn't kind of work either as an impulse wave and that's the low so from the low i'm not seeing an impulse wave to convince me just yet um yes i i, I can understand we could count this differently as i said we can put uh that bit that b wave this b wave a b wave there and then have this as a c wave over here and uh so we've got that as the a wave there then an a b and c wave for the b wave and then up for the c wave so we can get five waves here the 61.8 percent is just above the 4400 here um and so the difference here is an e wave would look at this as an a and a b wave here and then the c wave moving up here further which would be one and two here but i could also put the a wave here and have this as an a b c here for that for the a wave or we can count this up as one as a c wave we can count it up as one and two here and then one and two here and then that will take us higher still in this another move um or another two moves to the upside there and coming up here so that first high above the level just because you see that in that run there it doesn't mean that it's bullish because you could also get your second high and then you can get this here and then it can just pull down from here so it's very important that you like tip that one out at that point you know that's how that works um, otherwise you'll get trapped so yeah look that's that let's just move on to the nasdaq which is a little bit more weirder um but that's why i showed the s p first so because the triangle looked nice and kind of square and all the rest of it um you could count this out a little bit differently but i just sort of don't see how because um well, we've got our first zigzag here that's cool maybe you could count that as five waves but it's sort of stretching it a little bit i've seen somebody do it and i'm kind of going well kind of forcing it a bit so uh but even so over here um it doesn't matter what you know all that's sort of in the rear vision rear vision mirror so to speak so um but here i can see one and two and three down to here and we can go an a b c for four and then down for five here we could use this one here and go one two three four and five on that low as well but it still gives me five waves to that point because i can't include that as the lowest five waves i can go one two three here um i suppose i could go an a and a b and a c for four and down for five that's possible it's a bit sort of big compared to wave two here for that bit of a long shot possible but even if we took that as the low then we'd still be looking at this as an a wave a b wave and a c wave up here so we could look at it as a c wave but even so we're still not finished in our in our move you know 
you know, move to the downside. That's the thing. So just be very careful. I mean, it looks bullish. And look, hey, I may be wrong. Um, and, and I shouldn't really be taking it from the low there. But that's if I took it from this low, right, that's the 61.8%. But um, I really need to be taking it from that low because that's the A wave, the B wave, the C, the D and the E here or the A, the B and the C wave here for the B um, and that would be the same for the S&P. So in this case it's a little bit higher here. So that can take us higher into this but whichever way it goes it's all about the 15,000 isn't it? So we don't need to split hairs about that and then what we can do is we can say to ourselves well, the 61.8% is above the um, 15,000. If we got a classic trading levels pattern here, so the arrival, the reaction, the first high above the level, an A wave, a B wave, and a C wave there, well, then we can go long from that point, right? But otherwise, we need to be mindful that this whole correction is just not finished yet. You know, we've got another five waves to come down on this. We're not down at our 38.2% retracement level for this thing here either, or for the S&P, we need to be down further. Not that we have to reach it, by the way, but I'm just pointing out that we're not there just yet. So, yeah, look, um, the 15,000 is the line in the sand, and the 4,400 for the S&P. Um, this is a, a tricky thing. Um, if, if um, you know, once again, if you know, we move up here and then we move down through here in five waves. Well, that would be kind of nice because then we know that, um, you know, we can track that five wave pretty easy. You know, the, there's not a lot that can go wrong at that point. You know, there may be a little hitch here and there, but nothing that's not, that's going to throw us out too much. So it will be an easy pathway for us to pick that low and push up for, and, you know, buy and push up from that point, wherever that low is. It might be at, it might be at 13.8 or 13.9 or 14 or 14.3 or something, you know, who knows? But um, we can do all the extensions and everything. But at the end of the day, you just have to count the wave structures. Um, so look, that's kind of where we are, really. So let's just um, move in here and look at that in a little bit more uh, detail here. So we've had this A wave here for a while and the, this A wave and then this B wave here. You can see that this is not um, in five waves, this move here. So we could go one, two, three, four, five for an A wave and a B wave and the C wave, or you could count it as slightly differently. You could take it to here as an A and a B and one, two, three, four, five, but it's not five waves. So really it's got to be a triangle. It's got to be in the C wave. You could get this as five waves, the one, two, three, four, five, but the third wave here, is that a bit small compared to wave one? Maybe not. So you, we could put the B wave over here as well then in that case, and then look at five waves up here. So we could look at it as five waves or three waves. I don't don't know, but um, the point is, is that at what point would we go short here for this? Obviously, this low here would be important, but that's a long way from from the price. So we can also know that the market wants to push up a little bit further. The you know this move here is going to push the Asians up. It's going to push the euros up. Um, so we'll just see how that how that tops and turns here. Um, but yeah, maybe if I was shorting it, then I would be looking at the 72 here as the retested resistance there. I would get one position there. And then as if this came down, there would be a bounce on the 65 because you can see it here anyway. Um, and once that became the resistance here, then I would look to add at that point there. And then I'd also look to add under here as well, under the 50 here. But there's going to be a lot of bouncing around here. So you don't want to over trade through all of this. And then you've got the problem of because um, you'll need to leave your stop out of the way up here. So you need to trade really small amounts. You know, that's the trouble with, with day trading, isn't it, to a point? And, you know, I mean, if you're professional, you run your numbers and you know where you are and it's like washing the dishes. But if you're new to it, then reasonably new, uh, and, you know, you, that could be, you know, five years <laughs> that, you know, you could be, um, 
you put you put a little tiny bit of money in there of what you're supposed to be putting in there, um, but you find that boring and it doesn't grab your attention and uh, so on and so on. So you end up putting more in there and you're trying your luck and sometimes you get it, sometimes you don't. But your account that you've got, which is either a thousand dollars or five thousand or something or even to ten or something like that, then you know it just keeps getting blown up and and you think that you're getting better and better, but you're not actually. Uh, in, you know, you're not actually learning from your mistakes. Uh, and it's hard to change, you know. I mean, most of us are blokes and we're, you know, we're old dogs and we can't do new tricks and all the rest of it. So, you know, it is tricky business. Um, you know, you need to be smacked around a fair bit to, um, to, sh- to sharpen up in this, in this space. Um, but if you're just blowing up accounts, then um, you're better off just finding a trend and and you know and feeding it and tr- and go do turtle trading kind of thing you know not not, not that I know what turtle trading is all about but I'm just saying because it's slower you know get in the weekly trends of things you know like the energy sector's moving so just buy anything you know and and uh, keep it small alrighty enough waffling that's what I think that's that's happening it certainly looks like it's bottoming and turning up here just be careful it doesn't fail you need that solid support on the 15,000 for the NASDAQ with a classic trading levels pattern and then you'd also build through 1, 2 and 3 here as well so you should have 4 trades in from the 15,000 to the time we get to support on top of uh, group 1 there and then we can look to add on the 5 at that point there as well and that gives you enough time and space to get each one of those trades pretty close to break even or halving that risk as well so that's what also the levels come in handy for as well alrighty I'll leave it at that thanks for tuning in cheers